In today's video, I will rank the top 3 assault rifles in the Division 2. The list will not include any exotics, since videos like this one are meant to help mostly new players who can't be bothered going after exotics yet and they're just looking for a couple of good pieces to help complete their first builds. Keep in mind here that this video is based off my personal opinion. It's very likely that other players will have a different opinion regarding the top 3 assault rifles, however I think most players would agree with me that the weapons that I'm gonna talk about here are very very good. All the gameplay you'll see in the background with all the three assault rifles was recording using the exact same build and that's the build over here. Two Walker Harris pieces, one group of Sombra, one Fenris AB, Contractor's Gloves, Fox Prayer knee pads and the talents were the Glass Cannon and the Vigilance. Close to 6% critical hit chance and about 140% critical hit damage. So let's get right into it. The first assault rifle I want to talk about is of course a TKB. TKB came out in Title Update 15 and it's probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest hitting assault rifle in the game. It has a rate of fire of 650 rounds per minute, which puts it in the category of the slow fire weapons, as I like to call them. You see, Division 2 has a very simple balancing strategy when it comes to assault rifles. The higher the base damage, the lower the RPM. The lower the base damage, the higher the RPM. So TKB, because of its very, very high base damage, it hits kind of slow. However, it is very good for players who enjoy taking fights at medium ranges and prefer damage over rate of fire. Builds that help with weapon handling are very effective on TKB and can make it a laser beam that hits like a truck. The only issue with this weapon is of course the recoil or the stability. That's why weapon handling is a very good attribute for this weapon. PC players will most likely be okay with it, however console players might have a hard time getting used to the, to the recoil if they decide to not get any weapon handling. Moving on of course we have the farmers. FAMAS is the exact opposite of the TKB, a very very high fire rate of 900 rounds per minute with a much lower base damage. However, the FAMAS is loved by a lot of players because of how fast it can kill in close ranges. Even with a lower base damage, if it's used with a good damage build as you can see the gameplay in the background, it can melt enemies at close ranges and it's also very decent at medium ranges as well. FAMAS is ideal for players who want to be up close to the enemies and play with a more aggressive playstyle. If the recoil of it seems too much to you, you can always go with a named version of it which is called the Burnout. The talent offers 40% weapon handling which makes it a laser beam at all ranges with an insane rate of fire. Another very good build suggestion for FAMAS would be to use it with Striker because it offers an increased rate of fire as well as an increased weapon handling which makes the weapon perform overall much better. Better. The last and my personal favorite assault rifle is of course the Police M4. Now before everyone goes crazy about me not mentioning Carbine 7, Carbine 7 fills in place almost exactly the same as the Police M4 to me, so I honestly don't think it would be fair to waste the spot for it since it's pretty much the same weapon in my opinion. The Police M4 offers a more balanced approach with a fire rate of 850 rounds and a base damage that's slower than the slower hitting ARs but higher than the farmers. It works as a middle ground for more balanced approaches for players that want to have a weapon that does a little bit of everything. Decent fire rate, decent damage and very good recoil control. As I told you earlier, the Carbine 7 feels and performs pretty much the same as the Policing 4, so feel free to try them both and see which one suits you the best. Both of them are ideals for players who want to have a weapon which will be effective in pretty much every situation and it will pretty much never let them down no matter the range or whatever it may be. Now of course now you might be wondering which is better, a slower hitting AR that hits harder or a faster hitting AR that hits lower. Now if you want my personal opinion, after trying both types of weapons pretty much for a very very long time because I mostly play only with assault rifles. I've come to the conclusion that even though the slower hitting rifles hit pretty damn hard, I wouldn't prefer them over a balanced weapon like the Polynesian 4 or the Carbine 7 in pretty much any scenario. I think I would take the Polynesian 4 or the Carbine 7, I would take the Accus that it has, I would take the decent RPM and the decent damage, even though the damage might be lower than other weapons, simply because I can be more consistent and hit my targets a lot more easier and a lot more accurately and actually know that, you know what, 
I can take that guy down in 20 bullets because I'm going to hit the 18 out of those 20 bullets, right? I cannot say the same for weapons like the TKB or an AK, you know, especially if you're going with builds that needs you to hit your target, builds like, for example, Striker, which pretty much, you know, if you don't get your stacks up, the striker set is going to be useless. So the first thing that you need to worry about when you're using the striker set is how I'm going to get my stacks up, right? Well, you need to be accurate. In order to be accurate, I will go with a weapon that has high accuracy. That's the police M4, right? Now, if you're going with Heartbreaker, which again, you need to hit your pulsed enemies, I will go for a weapon like Famas, for example, because I hit them very fast, so I get my stacks up very fast, so my bonus armor goes up very fast, and my damage goes up very fast. So, you see, it all depends. However, there are builds and there are players who prefer slower firing weapons. Builds like that could be a very passive build, which of course depends uh, on damage. However, it has a different approach than just running and gunning everything. For example, if you're using the Soya knee pads, which is an exotic knee pad, which gives you all the way up to 30% extra weapon damage if you stay still and not move for a period of 10 seconds, I think it is then because obviously enemies are going to move but you're not going to be able to move you want a weapon that's going to be very effective at longer and medium ranges because you don't know where those enemies might go right so in builds like those i like to go with slower fire weapons it all comes down to personal preference and in personal testing what i've said in previous build videos of mine is try to come up with your own builds try to see how building actually works in this game try to see what works and not by yourself because then you will actually learn something and know it forever so the same applies here for weapons just because i mentioned here three weapons doesn't mean that you have to go with those three weapons and disregard any other weapon in the game your play style or your just opinion personal opinion might be different than mine after you've tested pretty much every weapon in the game and that's not because me or you somebody of us has to be wrong that's because we see things in a different way so please Go ahead, try everything out for yourself, but keep those three weapons or some, as something that some guy said on YouTube that if you ever feel like, you know, wondering what you should use, try to use one of those three. And I'm guessing that one of those three should fit in your play style and should work with your build. So that's it pretty much. If you like the video and you would like to see more videos like this one, for different weapon categories or even gear in general, make sure to click the like button and subscribe. Thanks for all the support. I hope you found this video helpful. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.